What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and in this video we're going to be looking at the key differences between the Samsung Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge. So both of these devices were announced yesterday and there are some differences more than we had last year and some of you have asked me to summarize these differences to hopefully help make a better decision of which one to go for. So let's get straight into it. There's a difference firstly in the size. The S7 Edge actually comes in quite a bit larger compared to the S7 and the difference is a lot more compared to what we had last year. So the S7 Edge is roughly about 8.5 millimeters taller, three millimeters wider, and it's roughly about 0.2 millimeters thinner. So they are about the same thickness, but the S7 Edge is larger overall and that's because it has a larger display 5.5 inches versus 5.1 inches. Now it's the same display technology Super AMOLED so you're going to be getting some nice bright and vibrant colors but you do have the dual edge display on the S7 Edge which does make it quite unique and this is not only going to add to the overall aesthetics of the device but it's also going to give you some more features which we'll be talking about a little bit later. A new feature that both of these devices have isn't always on display so you can have things like your time, calendar, uh, notifications and things on the display at all times. This isn't going to be taking up too much battery so this is definitely a nice touch. Resolution wise you've got the same resolution 2560 by 1440. Now the S7 because it has a smaller display with the same resolution you're packing more pixels in that same resolution so you do have a slightly higher PPI. This is nothing too major so I don't think you're going to be noticing much of a difference. Both of these have beautiful displays. Now in terms of the build and design of both of these once again very similar you've got a metal frame with a glass panel on the front and the back now the back glass panel is curved on both of these but more so on uh, the s7 the s7 edge has a slight curve on the back but you've got that dual edge curve on the front of the device so this is generally going to mean that the s7 is going to be more comfortable to use overall in one hand because of the smaller size as well as more of a curve back now with the s7 edge even with that curve back you're going to still have those sharp edges now this isn't a major deal don't get me wrong but this is something that I experience with the previous edge devices as well that there isn't too much to grip onto on the side so it is a little bit ever so slightly sharp if you are going to be using it for a long time so just something to bear in mind now both of these because they have the glass panel backs they're going to be quite slippery and also fingerprint magnets you guys must have seen so many images out there and videos of all these fingerprints on the back of these devices because they're so reflective as well and there's an easy way to overcome that and that's with a D brand skin and I'd like to thank Dbrand for making this video possible. Dbrand have a huge variety of skins for lots of devices, not only smartphones, but also consoles, uh, laptops, as well as tablets. I'm going to be leaving a link to Dbrand in the description below, so make sure you do go ahead and check them out. As soon as the S7 and S7 Edge have been released, you're going to be having some quality skins for both these devices from Dbrand, so make sure you do pick one up. Now, another new feature that both of these devices support is IP68 water and dust resistance. So uh, this is something that we didn't have on the previous devices. So it's a very, very beneficial, uh, not having to worry about getting some water in your devices. This is a great thing to have. Now, moving on to the internals, both of these have exactly the same internals. You've got the same processor, either the Exynos or the Snapdragon 820. This is gonna depend on which market you are from because different markets are gonna be having the different processors, but Samsung have said that 30% improvement on the CPU is available on uh, both of these. And in terms of graphics performance, 64%. And that is thanks to the Vulkan API. You also have inbuilt cooling in both of these devices, which is totally dope to have that in a smartphone. So you shouldn't have to worry about performance dropping if your processor overheats. In terms of the RAM, you've got four gigabytes on both here, and you have 32 gigabytes of base storage with a micro SD card slot so you can expand that storage. We've got the return of the micro SD card slot this year which we didn't have last year. Definitely nice to see. There may also be a 64 gigabyte version of both available in certain markets but that is not confirmed as yet. In terms of the cameras, you've got 12 megapixels on both here. An f1.7 aperture with larger pixels for better low light performance. So this will be very, very nice to see. And you've also got dual pixel autofocus. So this should give you super, super fast autofocus. There's some new features as well. 
such as a motion panorama. We'll look at more of these features when the devices are in hand. You've got 4K video recording here as well on both, and you've got a five megapixel front facing camera with an F1.7 aperture once again, so that should really help in low light. You've also got a selfie flash. Now this is gonna illuminate the screen to give you better low light selfies. This is similar to what we've seen on previous LG and iPhone devices. Now moving on to the operating system, you've got Android Marshmallow, the latest version of Android with TouchWiz on a top, so that's Samsung's own skin. So you're gonna be getting some additional features, but you are also going to have to wait for those updates to come from Samsung. You're not going to be getting them direct from Google. In terms of additional features, you've got a fingerprint scanner on the home button of both of these. Nice to see. Micro USB, they haven't gone for USB type C unfortunately this year. Apparently this was because so that it would still be compatible with the Gear VR headsets out there. I don't know, but uh, that is something that we are gonna have to live with for another year on these devices. And also there is no IR blaster on either of these. So Samsung have actually removed the infrared blaster that we had on the previous S6 an S6 Edge, so I know a few of you will be disappointed about that. Now, with the S7 Edge, you're gonna have those Edge features, so these have been in enhanced, so you're gonna be able to have shortcuts to apps and your contacts and things like that. So this is nice and it is definitely useful, although it's not too much about the features, I think the Edges are more about the aesthetics and looks for most people, but if you do wanna use those additional features, then they are there. In terms of the batteries for the S7, you've got a 3000 milliamp battery, which is an upgrade to last year. But the biggest difference for the S7 Edge is that you've got a 3600 milliamp battery. So a big improvement here. And if you are a heavy user, that's gonna be very, very beneficial. Both of these have fast charging. The S7 is gonna charge slightly faster fully compared to the S7 Edge, mainly because it has a smaller battery. But you also have wireless fast charging on both of these two. So these are some of the only devices that have fast wireless charging. Great to see. In terms of pricing and availability, both of these are going to be available on the 11th of March. You can pre-order them now or within the next few days, depending on where you're from. But the S7 does come in cheaper, roughly about £70, around about $100 cheaper compared to the S7 Edge. So you are paying that premium for the additional features that you get with the S7 Edge. And if you are on a bit of a budget, you might wanna consider going for the smaller standard version of the S7. So those were the key differences between the S7 and S7 Edge. To summarize, I would say that if you are a heavy user, you want a larger display, you want that extra battery power, 20% extra battery, and also uh, something unique in the way of the dual edge display, which I think is the best looking smartphone out there in terms of design. Maybe not so much in terms of the features. I don't know how many people will find those specific features that useful on a day-to-day -day basis, but just uh, that look of the device, then you might wanna go for the S7 Edge. But if you wanna be saving some money and you want something that's more compact and easy to use in one hand, then I think the S7 will be the option for you. Which do you think is the right device for you? Drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Or you can also participate in my poll. This is the first time I'm trying a YouTube poll, so it should be in the card somewhere. Vote on which one you would go for, either the S7 Edge or the S7 Standard. That will be interesting to know. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. And if you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe. Once both of these devices are out, I'm gonna be doing some in-depth coverage on the 11th of March or hopefully sooner. So make sure you have subscribed to see those first. Thanks for watching. This is Safa on Super Saf TV. And I'll see you next time. Did anyone get the 301 reference, by the way? If you know, then you know.